Good morning, welcome back to another video, and today, where do I start when beginning with Transmog? Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay guys, so today we are going to be doing a noob's guide, so to speak, or where do I start when you're going to start off by getting started with Transmog? And we're going to cover three different things, and that is, how does Transmog work? What farms should I do? and any helpful tips you can use for transmog. Now, this is fairly easy to actually cover, so let's get into the first subject. Now, how does transmog work? Transmog works very relatively simply, and this is due to having a wide variety on the auction house. Now, in order to get regular sales of transmog, you need to have an immense amount of variety of transmog pieces on the auction house. This means that you're going to have to do multiple different types of farms in order to actually gain a lot of transmog appearances. This is by providing different appearances such as if you went into a shop and you wanted to get a shirt but you wanted a blue shirt and that store only sold white shirts, you can see there's a problem there. This is kind of why you need to actually have multiple different types of appearances on the auction house because not everyone is going to buy that white shirt someone may want to buy a blue shirt or even a black or a red shirt so you get you get the gist of what i'm trying to say there you need to have at least a minimum of around about 1500 items to gain regular sales you can borderline get away with it with about like 900 to a thousand transmog items but the more the merrier so to speak now this moves on to my next thing, compounding. And people like to do crafted transmog items. Crafted transmog items are a great way in order to make gold as well because you're not actually spending an hour of time farming up a dungeon and hoping you get certain pieces of different types of transmog. You can basically, if you're using TSM, you can see which ones are selling for the most, which ones have a good sell rate, and which ones you can actually sell on the auction house. Personally, when it comes to blacksmithing, I always craft the Imperial Plate Armor because most people buy that in order to kind of look like a Stormwind guy. But other than that, I do tend to gravitate towards those because they're more frequently bought. But here's the thing, when I'm looking for a transmog item, I look at the profit that I can be made before crafting said item. This is how I describe it when if I created an Imperial Plate Helm for, and I could, could create it for 50 gold and I could make 100 gold back, I can then compound this and use, and then once that Imperial Plate Helm has sold, I will then create another two Imperial Plate Helms. This is to give you an outline gist of how we can reinvest our gold in order to make more crafted transmogs and to to create a bulk ton in order to actually make more gold in the long run. This works really well when you're actually crafting shirts. So if you really want to start to get into the appearance market, so to speak, I would recommend that you craft every single shirt, at least around about three of them, and then post those on the auction house because they have a low crafting cost and you can make a load of gold with that and everyone always pretty much buy shirts. Well, not say everyone, but you get the gist. A lot of people just buy shirts and they are relatively inexpensive to craft. So if you're just getting started, I would recommend that you do that. Other than that, I would go on to say that when you're, when you're reinvesting your gold into different types of things, make sure that you're actually increasing your wide variety of items that you're actually crafting. Unless you have enough starting gold in order to just craft every single one from like blacksmithing or something along those lines that provide you with profit, then I would go on to just getting another profession for crafting more different types of things such as leather working. Leather working seems to be an underutilized one for craft for crafting transmog items, but they actually sell rather frequently in my experience. So why not give that a go? If if not, then use tailoring. Tailoring is always a surefire way of get, gaining regular gold through tra crafted transmog, and or you can always do some shuffles of linen cloth into linen bolts and sell those on the auction house as well. So 
my top ones for crafted transmog is blacksmithing, then tailoring, then leather working. Now the next subject is where should I start farming? Which ones should I do first? Like, where do I start? How, how do I start? Number one answer to that is just farm a dungeon. But that's not a really good answer, is it? You guys want a list. So I crafted a list of five dungeons you should do. Now, I do recommend this and I have posted the roots of these on my website. And obviously there's no ads or anything on there. That's just like a website you can just go on and check out the roots and you can then just take the image off of there, do whatever you want with it and, and or anything along those lines. It just gives you an outline of what dungeons you should be doing. But number one that I would recommend is Razorfen Crawl. I recommend I re recommend Razorfen Crawl because it gives you a wide variety of different types of transmog items that sell rather well. These are pretty much go hand in hand with every single one of these dungeons that I'm going to list off. And it averages around about 35,000 gold per hour in looted item value. But obviously when it comes to looted item value, that is potential gold, not like materials where it can just be sold really, really fast at that current price, so to speak. And then you've got Zulfarak. Zulfarak have a chance of dropping you the Jade Gauntlets and most of the Jade set, along with a lot of the Glorious set. So I recommend doing Zulfarak as well. Any of the other Transmog items that you actually go in there for. Now when it comes to sell rates for a beginner, I wouldn't recommend actually looking too much into that. You, what you want me to, to do is actually just bulk out your auction house. We'll get into sell rates at a later date when I do like kind of like an intermediate uh, transmog thing and then we'll deep dive into crafted transmogs as well. Other than that, the third one that I recommend is Dire Maul. Dire Maul is possibly my favourite gold farm for transmog. I love it. It provides you with old world herbs, provides you with so much cloth, it also provides you with a 10 tonne of transmog. And these transmogs from Dire Maul sell so frequently, it's unreal. So I would recommend just farming that like insanely, uh, at least at least about five five or seven times. So obvious. So that being the case, that's like seven hours worth. That's how much I like hedge my bets with Dire Maul. Dire Maul is a brilliant farm, and I highly recommend it, especially if you're on a highly populated server, because you're not only providing the auction house with a load of unique different types of transmog items you're also you're also providing a lot of the old world herbs which are commonly most commonly sold on those higher realms mainly because people people have a bit more free gold on those realms and it's just so much easier to sell them on the next one that I would recommend is black rock depths for number 4 number 4 with black rock depths it's roughly around about 40,000 gold per hour, but it does vary on your realm. This one is a kind of a hit or miss, but I would also say it is a staple in order to bulk out your auction house as fast as possible. Same again, I would recommend a few hours instead of like five or seven, just a few hours of farming of the Black Rock Depths, but that should be enough to help bulk out your auction house. To be honest, Bulking out your auction house, you should really just do a few hours of pretty much every farm of these in order to bulk out your auction house quite effectively. And then you can move on to other transmog farms. Number five on our list is RFD, which is Razor Fen Downs. And Razor Fen Downs is absolutely amazing. I love Razor Fen Downs. Okay, it, it comes second underneath Dire Maul for me when it comes to farming up transmog. And... I love it because of the BOE gear, the blue BOE gear to be precise. Now these ones have some really unique models and they can only be farmed up in Razor Fen Downs. So if you actually spend a bit more time trying to farm up these types of high-end transmog BOE blues, then you're surely going to be selling some higher-end transmog as well as some low-tier transmog which you'll get from this farm. Don't forget in this farm to unlock the treasure chests because they can provide you with other 
different types of higher end transmogs or medium end transmogs as long with the star belt pattern which can drop from that particular instance well it can drop from those chests so to speak that is my five farms to get started with transmog and at the end of the day razor friend cruel zulfarak dire mall black rod depths and rfd or razor fen downs they i would say do a few hours of each and then you should have enough on the auction house just bulked out don't worry about sell rate you're just bulking your auction house up with loads of different appearances and then you should start to see some more sales as and when you start to build up your auction house with loads of different types of transmog other than that let's get on to some helpful tips now the helpful tip number one is get yourself a speed set and I would say if you if you need a speed set you can always go into here and a very basic one is by just getting the Azerite armor movement speed increases traits when you actually use your when you actually go into selecting your upgrades on your Azerite armor just pick the movement speed stuff that should give you a boost in speed not only that the fighter chow is still kind of viable but it's not necessary for farming but if you want to get around a dungeon fairly quickly still recommend it because it's relatively inexpensive to buy and you can just use that and then just keep running the instance even faster i personally do it on a druid like such as what i've got right now and my druid is absolutely amazing when when i'm actually farming other than that a speed set is really really helpful when it comes to doing old dungeons because they tend to be rather rather long and this helps you get around the dungeon quicker and increases your gold per hour because you'll be able to farm more mobs more effectively and then again get more runs in number two on our helpful list is the proving grounds technique and this is where you queue up to the proving grounds in the veil of eternal blossoms you go in there you exit the the actual proving grounds but you don't actually leave the group and this is where you can do this you can run the dungeon right to the end then you click the proving grounds to go into the proving grounds and it will be on your tooltip right here and then all you will have to do then is pretty much reset the instance and go back in and that is where you would start off right at the beginning again this saves you so much time it's 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 so helpful when you're actually trying to get things done when it comes to farming things like black fathom deeps or well or black fathom depths sorry but that you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Obviously, you don't want to be running right to back to the end because that will cost you more time. So the proving grounds technique is really, really helpful. Obviously, you will find the proving grounds guy when you literally are in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms in your little main hub. You all you have to do is just go over to where Lawmaster Cho is and just click the guy who is the proving grounds guy you will not miss him you will not miss him it's 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 really easy to see him other than that i recommend using scrap the scrap add-on comes up as such and i don't actually have it on me at this moment in time but it will come up here with an extra thing and it basically will auto loot well it will basically auto scrap and vendor any of your like gray items or anything along those lines that is just junk so you're not spending so much time just clicking and trying to get rid of all the stuff in your bags I'm kind of like lazy so I do tend to use scrap quite a bit but but I, that is just one add-on I would recommend when doing your transmog runs because you do tend to get 10 ton of crap now lastly I would say atlas loot and this is atlas loot Atlas loot is great. So we could go into classic and we could say, what farm am I gonna farm up? We're we're gonna go We'll say Razor Fen Downs, Razor Fen Downs. We're going to trash mobs and it will come up with this interface right here. 
and it will tell me all the BOE gear that can drop from this dungeon. Now, you can always, if you control click, you can always see what the Manslayer looks like, which is the tombstone axe that I was mentioning a few videos back if you actually remember, if you've been following the gold cap series, I mentioned that this could drop, but I couldn't remember what it was actually called, it's called the Manslayer. Other than that, you can get things like the bone lash, the bone slasher, which is kind of like a katana, I suppose. Yeah, it's pretty much a katana. So you get yourself a katana and you can get a bone which you can beat someone to death with. Other, other than that, it's one of those ones where you can see what type of appearances you can get from the different types of from the different types of dungeons and it is really, really helpful when you're trying to see what type of ones sell for the most. When it comes to Atlas Loot, I find this to be the most helpful. I go into Say and I can go to the Black Malice shift click I then will click on it in the chat and then I can pull it up here without even doing the dungeon and see how much it's going for on my realm to see if the tra transmog farm is actually worth doing if I'm going for those particular BOE items now not all transmog items that farmed from dungeons are going to be a hit so this is when I say double check your auction houses I mean just go onto Atlas Loot, check it up, click on what can be farmed up from there, and you can see that if I went for, like, I don't know, the Pal Fez, so to speak, you, you see that goes for a lot in Alder, uh, in Alderman, but remember that 0 0.05 sell rate, so it sells pretty damn fast. It sells for 899,265 gold on my realm or on a region market value average of 1.1 million. But bear in mind the Papal Fez is kind of one of those one-off ones. So I'm just using this for example. So don't think, ah, I'll go for him all the man because this one takes forever to drop. I'm just going to say that right now. Like you'll be farming for ages to try and get that particular piece of item. So that's why I gave you the list of the basic transmog farms in order to do, because all demand you're basically vendoring everything besides the BOE blues, pretty much. But other than that guys, what did you think on the getting started with transmog, so to speak, or where do I start with transmog? That is my basic guide in, or, in order how to do it, and I would and if you've got any questions down below, I will then answer them and pin them to the top of the screen. So anyone who's got any additional questions can see if they, oh, ha, he didn't answer this question that I have. See if, if it's in the comment section. If not, ask the question, I'll answer it. Don't you worry about that. That being the case, guys, have a lovely rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video on Wednesday. Take it easy, guys.